Good morning, uh, everyone. Um, good evening, uh, depending on your time zone. Um, thank you for joining our um, seventh monthly EdgeAI webinar brought to you by uh, TI's uh, Jacinto Processors team. My name is uh, uh, Shri Gurapu. I'm in uh, Jacinto Processors uh, software team. Um, so far in these monthly webinars, uh, we have covered quite a bit of topics, you know, on our AI cloud tool, our $199 starter kit EBM, deploying applications, you know, starting from simple hello world to uh, people counting AI box, machine vision, and industrial app inspection, and uh, many more. If you missed any of these uh, webinars in the past, they are available on demand on our training portal. So you can um, um, watch those, you know, at your um, convenience. Today, we will be focusing on our popular object detection model, that is uh, YOLO V5. We see quite a bit of customer interest and a lot of you know, questions on our E2E forums as well. So we are excited to have uh, Deva Priya Maji from our deep learning team to dig deeper into understanding what YOLO V5 model is and how we go about optimizing it and deploying it onto the Edge AI uh, platform. So that's the webinar um, uh, topic and uh, the agenda is uh, we'll do a quick recap of our overall TI's Edge AI solution, starting from the embedded processor to the different tools we have available, and then give um, an overview of uh, TI model zoo, and then jump into YOLO V5 and what kind of, how the model would look like and what kind of optimizations you know, we could uh, do to make it run efficiently on um, Edge AI platform, leveraging our deep learning accelerator. And then how do you go about benchmarking that model using our free uh, cloud tool that's available now? So just an overview um, you know, for, of this TI Edge AI applications. And um, we are very excited about this technology and um, um, all the interest that we are seeing from uh, the community and the market. Um, this is a really revolutionizing lot of you know, applications from um, all the way from factories to retail you know, to home. And it all starts with our uh, processor TDA4X um, with a very good um, combination of the ARM processing engine and deep learning acceleration and many other accelerators for imaging and video for efficient um, vision analytics. We have uh, quite a bit of you know, information about the processor and uh, some of the deep learning uh, benchmarks on our ti.com slash edgei, and you can see some uh, snapshots here as well. And you can compare with um, you know, all the industry standard ML perf in inference um, you know, benchmarking, and you can see how well the TDA v4 platform um, does uh, deep learning inferencing in terms of, you know, very high energy efficiency. That's on the first column. And then if you look at the free cloud tool, so we have uh, hundreds of developers today already working with this free cloud tool. Um, so you don't need any uh, hardware platform to start testing, you know, some of these deep learning algorithms. Uh, you can get started today. You can get started for free. And uh, we're going to show, you know, some examples, you know, in this, uh, you know, webinar as well. And then the third one is our um, actual hardware, um, the starter kit um, that is uh, available at $199 price point, offering eight tops of uh, AI you know, performance. So uh, along with all the accelerators and two ARM cores. Um, so that's pretty groundbreaking in the industry, you know, at this price point for that performance. Um, so we have uh, quite a bit of you know, customers already using it today. and. Um, um, so that's uh, um, exciting in terms of, you know, really doing real-time vision analytics. Um, and um, as we have covered in many of these, you know, um, you know webinars, we are providing extensive uh, tools based on industry standard APIs uh, using open source runtimes, um, you know, for all the popular deep learning development frameworks, whether it's TensorFlow or Onyx or TVM. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward um, and, um, you know, industry standard approach, you know, to be able to develop um, and deploy deep learning models. Um, you know, to take advantage of our deep learning accelerator, you don't need to run, you don't need to learn any new 
um, language, you know, for the, um, you know, our accelerator, but you're basically, you know, using industry standard uh, APIs to be able to um, compile the models and uh, deploy onto the platform. So we have shown many examples, you know, in the past. Uh, and today, as we dig deeper into YOLO V5, uh, we will also see how we use the same open source, um, you know, runtime APIs you know, to be able to compile the model and then deploy that into uh, a JA platform. So, um, so you can kind of see the whole um, deep learning model, you know, flow over here. You can select it from our model zoo, um, and you can do, you know, training and quantization. Uh, and then you can evaluate, you know, for the performance and then uh, deploy onto the platform. So with that, let me um, hand it off to um, Debu, you know, to um, dig deeper into uh, Model Zoo and then uh, YOLO V5. Yes. Okay, so let me now get started into the Model Zoo part. So in our TI Model Zoo, we have basically three different kinds of tasks, mainly layer classification, semantic segmentation, and object detection. And as we can guess, today's uh, webinar is on a specific topic of object detection, and more specifically on a specific kind of object detection. And in PI Model Zoo, we have around uh, lots of models which are already compiled, optimized, and ready to be deployed. And it is around 60 plus models from which we can choose and run them in our cloud tool. Now, let's dig deep, deep, deeper inside the object detection offering from PI. So, uh, we support mostly these uh, object detection architectures, which are FSD, uh, Retina Net, Efficient Depth, and YOLO V3, YOLO V5, and YOLO X. So, that's an extensive uh, uh, set of uh, meta architectures that is being supported. And uh, for each kind of meta architecture, you can find some models in our model zoo, which are already compiled, and you can easily evaluate them. And not just evaluation, there are repositories to train these models as well that you can train on your own data set and easily deploy them on cloud or in the EVM. Now, today's focus, as you know, is on yellow V5. So what makes yellow V5 object detection architecture that special? So the answer to that is on the graph on the right hand side. So here we have actually FPS numbers with NAP, which is used for object detection benchmarking. So if you see this graph, the top three uh, points that we can see, which are encircled, they represent three YOLO V5 models. And we can see that YOLO V5 models are like significantly outperforms other kinds of uh, object detection architecture. So that's why we are having so much of focus on YOLO V5. And specifically YOLO V5, as we know, is built on top of YOLO V3. So if you compare YOLO V5, these models against YOLO V3, which is this one, uh, you can see that it's quite much better or it significantly outperforms YOLO V3. So let's look into uh, the model details. So how, what are the differences basically from, that are there from YOLO V3 to YOLO V5? And uh, if we look at the major differences, we have listed them down here. So these are the five things, focus layer, backbone, feature fusion, auto anchor, and augmentation. These are the five uh, major changes from YOLO V3 to YOLO V5 that we will go into now. So first thing is focus layer. So the input to a YOLO V5 model is a focus layer. So as you can see, uh, on the left hand side, we have a YOLO V3 model, initial part of it. And on the right hand side, we have the YOLO V5 model. Now, uh, the author of the YOLO V5 tried to reduce the complexity of the initial few layers in YOLO V3. So as we know that in a CNN, initial few convolution, they work on high resolution. That's why the complexity of those convolutions are quite high. So the YOLO V5, they tried to reduce the complexity and instead of using convolution, they tried to use some sort of uh, data manipulation to reduce the spatial resolution of the input image. And that resulted in significant uh, complexity reduction. And as, we, and as we can see that it reduced the training time by around 15%. And the complexity of these few convolution in the beginning, until you have a uh, scale reduction in the spatial dimension by four, we there is around uh, complexity goes up from 8.8 .8 gigaflop to 1.4 gigaflop only for the first few years. That is around 7% compute reduction of the entire network. And I have given a link here to which has more details about the focus layer that I would recommend others to go through. Now uh, the backbone. 
So that is another thing that has changed from Yolo V3 to Yolo V5. Yolo V3 is actually based on a backbone called Darknet 53, whereas in Yolo V5, it uses slightly more slight modification on that, which is called CSP Darknet uh, 53. So what it does is, uh, this is on the left hand side, we have a typical uh, block of convolution in Yolo V3. On the right hand side also, we have that particular block, but the difference is that that block, the input to that has sees half the channel of the actual input. So basically from the top, we have 64 channel in this example. Uh, you split it into two, 32, 32. One goes through this concave block, which has the three cross three convolution, and the other goes through an one cross one convolution. And finally, we have a concat which gives you the same output. So basically, uh, the core compute block sees only half the channel, and that reduces the complexity of the entire network by around 30%. So I would suggest people to go to this link to know more about this CSP network, which are also called cross-stage virtual network. And this is one major uh, reduction in complexity happens because of this particular backbone choice in Yolo V5. Okay, so now from backbone, uh, let's go to the feature fusion. So as we know, in many CNN, in many modern CNN or mostly in object detection network, after the backbone, we have feature fusion module, which takes features from different spatial resolution and then fuse those features. And in Yolo V3, we have a particular type of feature fusion called SPN, which stands for Feature Pyramid Network. In Yolo V5, we use slightly advanced version of feature fusion, which is called PNF, also stands for Path Aggregation Network. And as you can see in SPN, you have a top-down, something called top-down feature fusion, basically from below high-level features, you go to low-level features while fusing. And in Yolo V5, you have a top-down path as well as a bottom-up path. So you have mixed up that, and PNF uh, is what is used in Yolo V5 for feature fusion. Next, uh, some more details about Yolo V5 architecture, what are getting changes, and uh, one of the major uh, innovation in Yolo V5 has been something called auto anchor. So it's like uh, you don't have hand-designed anchor in Yolo V5. So you give a particular data set, you specify a particular input resolution, and the, there is an auto anchor algorithm that tunes the anchors to the data set that you are using. And it tries to optimize something called base possible recall and finds you out the optimal anchor for a particular data set. Next is augmentation. Uh, Yolo V5 actually uses heavy augmentation, and most of the improvement in accuracy do come from augmentation. And among all of them, mosaic augmentation is something which is uh, a proposal from Yolo V5. Next is uh, pre-trained weight. So Yolo V5 actually doesn't use any pre-trained weight. It uh, completely trains from scratch. So that actually makes it simple to train the model. Okay, so that was regarding the Yolo V5 architecture and mostly the changes that have been there from Yolo V3 to Yolo V5. Now, next look into the uh, complexity uh, reduction part. So, if we discuss the changes that has happened from uh, Yolo V3 to Yolo V5. Uh, now, let's look into at how much complexity each uh, part of Yolo V5 reduces from Yolo V3. So Yolo V3 for a resolution of 640-640 has a complexity of 156 gigaflop. Now Yolo V5L, which is a uh, com which we should compare against Yolo V3, uh, the backbone of that that has a complexity reduction of 30% because we have used CSP darknet as we discussed earlier. So that reduces complexity to 40 by 45 gigaflop. Then we use focus layer in the beginning that reduces complexity by 7 gigaflop. And the feature fusion, which you use PNF instead of SPN, increases the complexity by 11 gigaflop. So overall, the complexity of Yolo V5L becomes 156 uh, minus 45 minus 7 plus 11. That is 115 gigaflop. Now, if we look at the MAP, which is the accuracy for object detection, is 48.8. So basically, Yolo V5L uh, reduces complexity by around 25 percent, whereas the MAP goes up from 34 to 48. So that's a huge jump. Now, Yolo V5 has two versions, which are Yolo V5M and Yolo V5S, which are more uh, suitable for embedded system because of their low complexity and reasonably good accuracy. And they are basically you train the network based on the depth of the network and the number of width of the network, which is the number of channels in the network. 
it's very easy to derive yellow V pi N and S from yellow V pi L. Now, uh, now let's look into the optimization that we have done for YOLO V5. So basically until now we saw what are the changes that has happened from YOLO V3 to YOLO V5, but we, we see that in YOLO V5 everything is not embedded friendly and we have to make certain optimization to make it run very efficiently on, uh, on an embedded pla on our platform. And uh, these changes are not arbitrary, they are very similar to what was done by Google when they derived efficient net light model from efficient net and we make similar changes here. So I have given the link of that blog here. So I would suggest uh, to go through this uh, blog to have more details about those changes. Now, uh, most of the changes that we have done here are to replace layers which are not embedded friendly or not quantization friendly. For example, let's say there are activation functions such as CLU, hard switch, leaky relu. We try to replace those kind of activation by relu because relu has only the positive part, whereas these activation functions have both positive and negative part because of which the range becomes very high and they are not friendly to quantization. Now, that is the first thing. We also remove like uh, squeeze and excitation layers if, because they are also not embedded friendly. We remove uh, down sampling uh, that, are not, that are done using spatial slicing because spatial slicing is sort of a data manipulation which are not friendly to a compute uh, focused hardware. So we try to do down sampling using convolution or max pool. Similarly, if there are any max pool layers which are very high receptivity uh, that we don't support, we try to do, uh, implement it using max pools of lower receptive field. So apart from YOLO V5, TI models actually has many other models which have similar kind of changes like mobile net V3, efficient net, light, YOLO X, YOLO V3, and so on. And uh, you can go to TI model zoo to look into those models and see what all changes have been done to make it optimized. Now, uh, this was an overall uh, idea of what kind of layers we should change. So let's see what all changes we actually did for YOLO V5 to make it optimized. First thing as we discussed, activation function. So uh, YOLO V5 has an activation function called CLU, which is like the input time sigmoid of the input. Now again, this has like, uh, as we said, it's not that embedded friendly. And to make it embedded friendly, all the activation, CLU activation is replaced with ReLU. And uh, that was regarding activation function. Another important thing of YOLO V5 is uh, the training of YOLO V5 happens with variable size images. Now, not just YOLO V5, many other frameworks does that, but for embedded system actually when you, it's better to, it's always needed to specify the input size because memory allocation and many other things happen based on the input, based on the input size that you provide. So we train all our YOLO V5 model with fixed size input so that it is optimized for fixed size inference. Next, uh, focus layer. So as we said earlier, that in focus layer you do down sampling using spatial slicing. So instead of doing spatial slicing for uh, down sampling, we use a lightweight convolution because spatial slicing is the data manipulation kind of layer which is not optimal for a uh, compute intensive hardware uh, like ours. So we tried to uh, replace it with a lightweight convolution having the same input dimension and the output dimension. And it doesn't increase the uh, compute much, but we get similar functionality here. Uh, next is the uh, spatial pyramid pooling. So spatial pyramid pooling actually are now used in many networks and they generally, the intention is to increase the uh, receptive field of the network and uh, they are implemented by max pool or very high kernel or they are implemented by uh, dilated convolution and many other techniques. So in YOLO B5 actually uh, the spatial pyramid pooling that module is implemented by max pool with very high kernel size. So there are YOLO V5 models which has max pool with kernel size of 13, uh, 9, 7, that kind of high kernel size. So we don't support that high kernel size. So we basically implement that using uh, kernel size of 3 and we'll see that the functionality remains exactly the same. So you can train a model with high kernel size, but you can run inference on the model with a lower kernel size. So here is an example. So basically this YOLO V5 S6 model has, uh, this is a STP module for YOLO V5 S6 model and it has max pools with 5 by 5, 9 by 9, 13 by 13. And uh, 
we don't directly support it, but we can basically split these max pool like this. So functionally, they are same, and this model can efficiently run on our hardware. So, and you can further optimize it like this, so it will have the six max pools, and you can get all the outputs from here. So that's how you replace a max pool with a larger kernel size with a max pool of a lower kernel size without any change uh, in the functionality. Okay, so that's what uh, all the changes that we did in Yolo V5 to make it more optimized. Now, uh, how do you train uh, these models with all those changes? So we actually uh, host a repository called AGI Yolo V5, and it has all the changes that we have described until now. And you can basically start training any model with all the optimization using the repository. And you can have your own data set and you can train your own model here. And it has multiple of models that we have trained using this repo, and all of those models are listed here. And we actually host all the checkpoints for all these models, and you can just use those checkpoints to reproduce all the accuracy numbers that we have uh, got from this particular repo. Okay. So now let's look at the impact on accuracy because of all the changes that we have done. So we are seeing here for YOLO V5S model. So YOLO V5S official model that has an MAP of 36.7. With CV2 value, we get an accuracy of 34.9. And when we change it to change the focus layer again to with a convolution, we get around 35.0. So overall, we have a drop of around 1.7%, and most of it happens from really to zero. But it is not a significant drop, and uh, it's quite uh, low. Now, now we have trained the model. Now, what is the next step if we are trying to uh, activate it? The next step is we need to export that model. So we need to get an ONNX model because you know V5 is a PyTorch repository, so it's very easy to export that model to ONNX. Now, to run it on uh, TIBL, we actually need to export the entire model. So uh, basically, entire models means it has to, it should take an input and it should give you the final detection boxes. And we have added support to do that in AJLO V5. So basically, you can train a model and then you can export the entire model. And this complete model can be uh, run in TIBL. So let's look into the start of the yellow v5 model so once you export the yellow v5 model uh, the first part of the model is encoder and then you have feature fusion uh, where you fuse features from multiple scales then you have the detection heads and finally you have the detection layer so these are the four parts and the detection layer basically has all the information regarding uh, box decoding or nms all the parameters of the nms so all those informations are in the detection layer and that is very important uh, part while running uh, a model in our TIDL. So uh, let's look at the model compilation part, given that we have trained the model and we have exported the model, next thing is to take the WinNX model and compile it. And we need to compile any kind of model, be it classification or segmentation, but compilation of OD model is slightly different because in OD model compilation, you need to define something called a prototext. Now, what is the prototext? The prototext is the file that you need to define that contains all the relevant information of the detection layer. And to make it simple, actually, we have uh, some sample prototext file in our AGI Yellow V5 repo that you can use uh, and see to see how to define prototext. We will see some examples now. So this is, for example, uh, uh, a prototext, the one that we have on the left. And now let's look into like how to define this prototext. Let's say you have a given model. How do you uh, define a prototext for that given model, which basically has all the information of the detection layer? So in the prototext for YOLO V5, there is something called the YOLO param. So there are four YOLO param here, as you can see. That is because this particular YOLO V5 S6 model has four heads. So for each head, we have a YOLO param section. So there are four heads here, so there are four YOLO param section here. Now, uh, for each yellow param section, there is an in, something called input. So what is that input? So basically, you need to go to that particular head and see what is the output of that particular convolution. So for this particular head, we can see the output is 370 from the ONMX model. So that input is 370. 
So that is the input. And now this input can vary uh, based on if you change the model or if you export, depending on the title, also when a new version also it can change. So in what you are defining your proper text, just see what is the output of the convolution. That should be the input of the YOLO param for each of the head. Another important thing is the name here, which is YOLO V3. So basically for all the proper text for all YOLO meta architecture, this is YOLO V3. So uh, yeah. Okay, so now uh, we know that what is the input of YOLO param. Uh, next, look at the other things in the YOLO param section, which is like the anchor width and anchor height. So as we have said earlier that in YOLO V5, you have an auto anchor algorithm, which basically tunes your anchor based on the data set or the input resolution. So whenever you try to train a particular YOLO V5 model with a given data set, it runs something as shown in below. It runs this auto anchor algorithm, which tries to optimize the anchors for the best possible recall. And it runs thousand iteration of genetic algorithms to find out those optimal anchors. And here, as you can see that after those thousand anchors, it has found some anchor dimension. So here, as you can see, the first anchor dimension is nine and 12. So basically for the first anchor, the anchor width is nine, anchor height is 12. And you will know that in yellow V5 or even yellow V3, there are three anchors uh, for each head. So the first three anchors are for the first head. So first anchors width and height are 9, 12. So that's what is popular here. Anchor width is 9, anchor height is 12. Next one, 18, 41. So here, 18 and 41. So like that, you need to populate all of this. So that's how you populate the anchor width and height for all the uh, YOLO param section. So that is regarding the anchor dimension. Now let's move to the next part of the prototext, which is the detection output param. Now, what does it contain? It contains all the other information, for example, uh, which are needed to um, make it work as expected by the training framework. And this all parameter has to be make similar or same as the uh, parameters in the training framework. For example, NMS threshold, that is like an input parameter to your NMS operation, which says beyond how much overlap you ignore a particular detection. So that has to be mm, makes made same as the training framework. Then your top K, which is like the number of detection that goes to the NMS. Then keep top K, which is like uh, after the NMS, how many detections to retain. And then your confidence threshold, which is like after in the end, how only detection with a particular threshold, greater than this confidence threshold are retained. So all these are important parameters. And this confidence threshold actually, when you are trying to reproduce any accuracy number that the training framework mentioned, you need to use a very low value of accuracy that you can check from the training framework itself. But when you are in, when you are running in, in for a practical purpose, like in deployment, you need to use a high value of confidence threshold uh, because high value of confidence threshold, so you get the only the conf detection with uh, high confidence. And uh, yeah, and another thing is like this code type, which is you need to change depending on the meta architecture. So for YOLO V5, it is code type YOLO V5, which specifies the type of box decoding that happens for uh, YOLO V5. So these are all uh, all the details about the prototypes that we defined until now. Now actually we look into different kinds of prototypes and what all changes from one model to another model for a given prototypes. So here you see two prototypes for different resolution. So on the left hand side, you have a prototypes for YOLO V5 S6 model for input resolution of 640 on the right hand side, same model, but for an input resolution of 384. And as you can see that the anchor dimensions, they are they like quite lower for the uh, input resolution, lower input resolution. So that is expected because your ground truth are also getting scaled based on the resolution. So here we didn't have to do anything. The auto anchor algorithm automatically tuned the anchor for that particular resolution. Everything else mostly remains same for these two prototypes apart from the anchor dimension. So that's what you need to keep in mind. If you are changing the input resolution, anchor dimension also needs to be changed. Next is for different models. So this is yellow V5 S6 at 640 input resolution of 640. This is yellow V5 N6 at input resolution of 640. So anchor dimension don't change here because the input resolution is same, but the model has changed. So this input parameter for each yellow param section that has changed. That we need to keep in mind. If you're changing the model, you should take care of the input section of the yellow param. Uh, next is uh, prototypes for two different kind of data sets. So here, the first one is for the Coco data set and the one on the right is for a called wider phase. So as you can see that the wider phase anchor dimensions are quite low. That's because the wider phase has lots of small objects and 
the auto anchor algorithm tune the anchor dimensions to be lower to make it more suitable for wider face data set that is one change another change is wider face has a single class so the number of classes also has to be changed to one so yeah basically if you are changing the data set anchor will change and we need to update the proto text next uh, so until now we actually defined all the proto text which was one of the required element for compiling an od model now we go into the actual compilation. So actual compilation is like a uh, floating point model. We need to convert it to fixed point model to get uh, better performance. And more specifically, we need to convert it to the eight bit model to get maximize the performance. And we uh, discuss like different kinds of options that we can explore. And we have explored for Yolo V5 to destruct accuracy gap from float to fixed point, basically eight bit, to less to close to one percent. And here are some of those options that we have used for uh, Yolo V5 quantization, more specifically the number of frames used for calibration, which is set to 50, and the number of iteration that has been used is also 50. And we have done some tuning to uh, do something called mixed quantization that we will discuss next. So let's go to the more specific compilation option for object detection. So these are actually all the compilation options. The one on the uh, here, which are like the these two, Enclosed by the yellow box, object detection meta type and object detection meta layer name list. So they are specific to object detection models compilation. And for YOLO V5, actually the meta type is six, and the prototext is the prototext that we have defined. We need to provide the path to that prototext here. And another important thing is this output feature 16 bin name list that we have set to certain values here. So let's see how did we get to these four values. So here is some experimentation that we have done for a model Yolo V5 S6, uh, our optimized version we call TI Lite 640. So in floating point, this model gives an NAP of 37.1. We quantize it using 16 bits, we get exactly the same accuracy as float, so no drop in accuracy, but we want to go to 8 bit. So we uh, quantize the model to 8 bit, we saw some drop around 4% from float. Then we explore mixed quantization where we tried uh, the first layer in 16 bit, everything else in 8 bit, the last layer in 16 bit, everything else in 8 bit, and only the first and last layer in 16 bit, everything else in 8 bit. And as we can see, that with last layer in 16 bit, we are able to build the gap with float to close to 1%. So there is only 1.1% drop, and we get the best, uh, we get not much, only a little bit of uh, performance drop from 8.55 millisecond to 9.13 millisecond, which is negligible. So this simple mixed quantization, with the help of that, we are able to get good performance with Yolo V5. And as an observation, we have seen that all the Yolo V5 models that we have trained, with either the last layer in 16 bit or first and last layer in 16 bit, we are able to get uh, performance very close to the float. So that was regarding the options that we need to choose for Yolo V5 compilation. And here, as I said, these four layers we are doing in 16 bits. So these four layers are actually the uh, last convolution layers of the four heads. So in Yolo V5 S6 or M6 model has four detection heads. So there are four convolution layers for each head and all of them are set to 16 bits. That's what these result corresponds to. So we get an NFP of 36 for 9.13 millisecond. So that is the option that we have set for Yolo V5 compilation. Now, uh, how we can compile now what are the options for compilation well we have the uh, pi cloud tool which you can use for compiling a model but the preferred way of compiling a model is to use the repository that we host is called agi benchmarking so that repository can you can use to compile a model now why is it recommended because if you are compiling a model the next step will be to find out what is the accuracy of that model and this particular agi benchmarking code has taken care of all the pre-processing and post-processing that are needed for Yolo V5 model as well as many other models. So you can compile a model using this repo, you can find out the accuracy that your model will get upon deployment using this repo. So I have given a uh, snippet here from that particular repo for Yolo V5 S6 model. So here you can see it has all the information like the mean of this model, mean used in the pre-processing, scale for the pre-processing, the tag value. So when you resize in your V5, you need to do certain type of padding. So the tag values are also fixed. So all these are changed, all these are matched with the actual training repo. 
So we need to match each and every parameter to exactly reproduce the number that we are getting in yellow V5 model. And all of them has been taken care of in this particular repository. So here you can see we are specifying what our layers are in 16 bit. So all of them are uh, taken care of here. So we will suggest to use this particular repository whenever you are compiling yellow V5 or any other model and deploying it. So that's regarding AGI benchmark. Now, once you are compiling, let's try to measure the uh, performance of this model. So before going to the performance of our optimized model, we tried to theoretically estimate what will be the performance of the original YOLO V5 model. And by running, the, and we are, when we are theoretically estimated, we estimated for different block like focus layer, SPP module as it is, Activation activation and the rest of the model. And we found out the total latency to be around 23.9 milliseconds with an FPS around uh, 41.84, so close to 42. And as we saw earlier, that our model was taking 9.13 milliseconds uh, per frame. So that this, our model is, our optimized model is around 2.6x faster. And this is also, we are not uh, comparing the quantized numbers, quantized accuracy numbers. So the, the, our model latency will be 2.6 faster compared to the Yellow V5 model. Now let's look into the our optimized model, specifically Yellow V5 S6 model. So you can also do this in the cloud tool. So in the cloud tool, you can see, take a Yellow V5 S6 model and you can run it on ARM. So if you run it on ARM, we get around uh, half FPS for this model, so which is quite high. And then we accelerate it using our accelerator. And then we can run the same model at 110 FPS, so around 9.13 millisecond per frame. So we get good acceleration when you're using the accelerator. And this shows uh, everything like in the beginning you're using the CPU and this is accelerated uh, time. So you can run basically Yolo V5S6 at 640 resolution at just 9.13 millisecond or 110 FPS in TDFO. Okay, so that was all uh, from starting from uh, Yolo V5 model definition to final deployment in the uh, cloud tool. So let's try to conclude all of it. So Yolo V5 TI like as we defined it is an optimized version of Yolo V5 which can be fully accelerated in our uh, accelerator. Now how to get started? So you know first you can uh, run evaluation on the cloud tool. You can select your own uh, model by checking the FPS or latency or video bandwidth from the cloud tool. Now once you have selected a particular model from the cloud tool, you are not stuck there. You can go to AGI Yolo V5 repository and you can train your own model there. Uh, basically the model that you have selected from the cloud tool. So you can train that particular model on your own data set. You, after, upon training, you can export that model uh, through a complete ONMX model. And now that model can be compiled and deployed. And even for compilation, you have the AGI benchmark repository. So you can uh, basically give a link to that model and you can compile that model. And then that model is, you can use it for a benchmarking accuracy or that is also ready for deployment in cloud or in the EVM. So that is the entire flow. You first find out a model from the cloud evaluation tool, then you select the particular model that is suits your requirement. You train that model in the AJ Yolo V5 repo. Uh, once you have trained that model on your own data set, you export that model. Once you are exported, you can use AGI benchmark to compile the model and finally it's ready for deployment. So yeah, that's the entire uh, chain of uh, Yolo V5 deployment for TDF or in our cloud tool. Yeah. <laughs>